Good morning. Oh, it's gonna be a hot one today. Uh, Phil is, well, he's he's got my 7520 and he's working on getting, he's gonna plant those replant beans um, that I talked about briefly yesterday. I got seed in last night, late. Somebody brought it to me at like 9.30 last night. And um, we decided to go over and disc these super wet spots or hard ground out spots. They're not wet anymore, but they were uh, before he goes over there to plant them. Problem is our disc is too big, big tractor. You would run over a lot of beans to do it. And so we're borrowing a neighbor's little 12 foot disc, pull behind 7520 that'll, it'll be fine. I don't even know if a disc is necessary, but it will help loosen stuff up. So anyway, Phil's working on that. He's gonna do that, then he's gonna go plant. I am going to go put up some field signs here this morning. I got them out yesterday and never actually got to putting them uh, out. So let's go. It'll be fun. One. Check. I decided to start up here. This is this is the irrigated corn. That's the, that's the best corn we got. Might as well put a sign on it. All right, now my customer is just down the road here that's been asking for signs, so we'll go down there. Our traveler is going to be done in about an hour, so we got to hurry. I thought you'd be able to see it, but there's a hill there, so maybe, 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 maybe. Oh, there it is. Oh, some rain would make this whole sign putting up thing a little easier, but we pound the bottom half of our sign in and uh, we take one of our pre-assembled golden harvest signs that doesn't have a number on it because, well, because it's easier, and we pop it in there. That one's good. Decent looking field of beans. Same thing across the road. This one's on our own stuff here. Um, some of this corn, especially right here on these ends, doesn't look the greatest. And if it stays dry, a lot of this stuff is going to go downhill in a hurry. But I'm putting the signs up anyway. In my opinion, nobody's going to take a look at that sign that says Golden Harvest on that field and say, Oh, that corn looks really good. I should go and buy some of it. Or that corn looks like crap. It's Golden Harvest. I don't want any of that. What putting up signs does for me is create the illusion or the actual, you know, it's, it actually is, but it, it shows market share. It shows, hey, there's other people planting this. If they're planting it and there's that much of it growing around here, it must do okay. And so that's why I put up signs and I try and spray it, spread them out over a wide area so that I can, you know, as people, farmers are driving through here or other people in the neighborhood, they say, man, there's quite a bit of that stuff planted. Maybe I should give it a shot. I got eight or ten signs put up. Um, we got to go up and move the traveler pretty soon. We got to take fuel up this morning, so we'll go do that. I don't know how exactly this is going to work because Phil's got my tractor, 7520, which is okay, I guess. We'll have to unhook the 4020 and use it to pull the gun out. I've never done that. I think it'll work. Should be fine. It appears we've got a little ways to go yet. I thought it would be farther along than that. Oh well. My, uh, monitoring system has not been reporting since like 11:30 last night i think uh we don't have cell service where it sets so uh that's a bit of a bummer i was gonna go re reset it or shut it off and turn it back on see if that makes any difference but our new box should be here today we'll get that put on later uh we're putting fuel in anyway so we got a little time we'll just let it keep pumping so the seal on my traveler inlet pipe up there has been leaking this entire run. Usually it leaks just a little bit when you first start it up and then it seals up. And now we've got a mess. I replaced it last time we were irrigating, like two years ago. It can't be worn out. Because the first one was, or the one I took out was original, so sometimes it just does that, but that's super frustrating. Hopefully when we pull it back out, it'll rub a piece of dirt out or something and seal back up better. to the next lane. We're taking the tractor out so we can pull the gun out now. Um, my speed's 
control is not quite as precise with the 4020 as it is with the 7520, but I think we'll be all right. Um, this one is a short pull because we're right behind this barn. I think it's like a five and a half hour pull, which we'll put it done somewhere around five-ish, 4.30 to five. So I've gotten a question a couple of times about using the gator to pull this out. There's no way. Uh, I've tried to do that before just to, at the end of the year, we've got to take it home and then pull it out and reel it in empty without any water going through it to drain it. I can't pull it out then with the gator because there's not enough weight in track. That hose is full of water. It is quite heavy. And it, oh, this, I don't want to get wet. Um, but it, uh, it it takes a lot of weight and traction just to be able to move this hose, especially dragging it. There's a lot there. That box, you just don't worry about that box. We're just gonna call it a inflationary hedge. These beans, however, those are replant beans. Okay, well I'm back to putting up some more field signs. We're gonna do a little crop scouting while we're at it this is the very first field of corn that we planted april 23rd second third something like that end rows are a little short and uneven compacted end rows imagine that we don't have compacted end rows yeah we do i know so uh we'll walk out here into the field a little bit I'm trying to remember what hybrid we've got here i think i've actually got a split planter with 111 day and 108 day couldn't tell you which one i'm in at the moment you can see we've got some rolling going on. These leaves are are curling up. They're bringing the edges together. It's a self-defense mechanism for when it gets dry to help preserve moisture. Um, but overall, still pretty good crop, right? This is shoulder high, head high on me. And I am 6'4", so it's it's getting some height to it. Two weeks to tassel, probably. It's not a bad looking field of corn. We just need some rain. If we could get a solid inch to two inches of rain on it, it would just change this, change my entire outlook on how our crops are right now. The good news is we're not firing this corn up too bad yet. I see a couple of bottom leaves that are starting to burn the edges up. Um, when the corn is really, really under stressed, It'll start stealing nutrients from the bottom of the plant up. And when that happens, that's when you know you're really starting to hurt it, especially the higher up the plant that those leaves get. These bottom ones here, well, that leaf's not really doing much for us anymore anyway, is it? This one was probably number one. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I would call this V10 corn. Um, this is a sucker. I don't see them on a lot of these plants, but that's also a good sign because when corn plants have those suckers coming off of them, it means that they're happy and they're storing nutrients and they're storing moisture for later in the season. And so, uh, again, it'll steal from that stuff first. So as we start to really stress these plants, the longer we go without rain, um, they'll pull out of those suckers and protect the main stalk. And that's a good thing. 8 out of 10. I give this field an 8 out of 10, trending down until it rains. Well, let's take a look at the wheat. This is, um, this is close. Straw looks really bright, whitish, which is, is good. It's very tall. Um, this is our first planted wheat. Should be our earliest wheat. It's an early variety. And it should be our best wheat, just because of those other factors. But this is this is closer than I would have thought. What's today? Thursday. Ah. So what we're looking for in this is these heads to start kinking over. So see how these ones are hanging down? They're not pointed straight up like this one anymore. That's when you can generally tell, okay, this wheat's ready to go when the heads start bending over. Um, some of them are definitely there, but there's quite a few that are not yet. This wheat is close. We have more weather like 
like like bright sunshine here today and hot it makes it get there pretty quick and it looks like good wheat too man this is rather exciting here actually i don't think it's ready today but depending on weather i could see us starting wheat over the weekend or first of the week at the latest let's see let's pull one of these heads apart oh yeah these are a little little plump yet So there's our kernels. They're definitely pretty fat and soft. Yeah. Okay. Two, three days. First of the week, I'm going to say. This is not there yet. I should not be able to smash it with my fingers like I just did there. So, um, but yeah, we're getting closer. Let's walk back out and grab one of those that was really kinked over, see if we got some more. Uh, mature kernels. Yeah, look at that. Those are hard, and if they were all like that, you'd be dang near ready to go. This is how you can tell. Sixteen percent. My guess is it's sixteen. It's. I mean, there was a little crunch to them. Maybe even fifteen. All right, now I'm gonna show you something that I, I'm not real proud of. I don't wanna show you. You guys remember how I was talking to you about the different traits in our soybeans? So we have uh, soybeans that are resistant to different herbicides. 90% of what we plant or more are Enlist soybeans, meaning they're resistant to Enlist herbicide, which is a 2,4-D um, type of chemistry. The other ones are Extend Flex, which are not resistant to 2,4-D, but they're resistant to dicamba. We don't spray any dicamba. We do spray some Enlist. Uh, I gave Dad a list of fields, and I said, you cannot spray these three fields with Enlist. Well, he did. Kind of. So here's the deal. So we were spraying beans a week or two ago, and he finished up on a field spraying in list on it. Had 30 to 40 gallons of chemical left in the tank. He then loaded the sprayer up, did not put any more enlist into it, used a different chemical called Sequence that we sprayed on most all of our beans, and came to this field. He started on the far side over there, which are enlist beans. But Phil switched varieties halfway through because we had some of these left from the other field where we planted them, needed to plant them out. And Dad sprayed them. They did not get a full dose of Enlist, but they got a ounce to the acre maybe. Enough to make them not look real pretty. So one of our chemical salesmen called me up this morning. He said, hey, you guys farm this, right? I said, yeah. And he said, what's with those gray beans? And he knows dang well what happened because dad told him yesterday. I think he was just rubbing it in a little bit. I don't know if these are going to make it or not. We're going to find out. We'll watch them over the next couple days. If we have to come in and replant them, we'll come in and replant them. But uh, they're a little wilty today. So I'm going to walk up here to the line. Not that you can't see it from here, but we'll look right down the line. And you can see that, um, yeah, there's a difference. Well, it's right there. There's some... The variety changeover wasn't, there's some regular or endless beans peppered in here that, um, yeah. I don't know, what do you think guys, are these gonna make it? I don't know. I don't remember what day he sprayed this, it's been three or four days. They're, uh, they're feeling it, that's for sure, but I don't know if they're gonna die. We're gonna find out. It's one of those mistakes that you hate to have happen, but it's the risk I run planting two different traded package, two different traits of soybeans. And this variety that we're standing in did so well last year in all the trials and the plots and stuff that it was worth planting a field of them. Um, but if we can't keep the chemicals separate, I can't afford to plant them because these are going to take a yield hit. Whether we have to replant them or not, they're going to take a yield hit. Fortunately, it was only 15 acres on the edge of this field and not 
160 that we had of this whole variety. So the other field where we planted them, there's a 140 acre field, that's what I bought them for. And uh, they all look really good, like really, really good. So you win some, you lose some, right? I should go take a nap. That's what I should do. Uh, I've been hanging out in the office, killing a little time. Delaying putting up field signs, plot signs. That's what I should be doing, but it's 88 degrees outside and I don't feel like doing it. So uh, we've got two hours about until our traveler is done. So a little bit of time here. Phil parked that tractor with that little disc that we're borrowing back here. I'm gonna take that tractor back with me, so we're gonna we're gonna use this disc and go around the side of the barn down here where we added on, and we've got some dirt that we need to level off and eventually get some grass planted or something. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna play with it is what I'm gonna do. This area back here it needs leveled off. This is a halfway decent tool for it. Then we can come over with that harrogator and really level it off. Well, while we're doing little tillage work, we had a little spot here, uh, kind of along our little halfway pond that we've got behind the buildings here that it was too wet to plant when we were back here before. Uh, we tried doing some tillage, made some major ruts, and so it's dry now. I've got a little disc, everything's hooked up. We're trying to level it off, and if Phil has any beans left, he can try and patch this in. We're, there's not much here acre and a half maybe but ah if we can get something off of it we'll get something off of it this is old school here 12 foot disc yeah it's it's doing something it's helping kind of look at all that i did over there no auto steer or anything Man. Right on cue, Phil pulled in the driveway. He must have a little bit of beans left because he's going back there to plant what I just disked. So we're done with this. I'm gonna take it back. It's a buddy of mine. It's around the corner. Yeah, I'm gonna take it back to him. All right, we got to get this um, header cart out of our driveway here. So we're gonna start the combine up, lift the head up, and uh, then we can back it in underneath it. And eh, we may or may not take it off and actually drop it, but we got to at least get the cart in here. Dang kid did a pretty good job here picking all these weeds off yesterday. If you missed that, we had a bunch of velvet leaves here. There's a few left. He was snipping them off with wire cutters and throwing them out there in the driveway because they were in the way. Good job. Good enough for today. All right, what's next? It's got his chemical shuttle he's done with for a while, so he's gonna put it away. He's doing a real nice job on the barn over here. Got the roof painted, painted the north side here, painted most of the west side. And he's putting soffit in, you see that up there? Keeping the birds out. He's got a little more to do over on that side yet, and he's gonna do it along the west, or the north side here, but he's getting it. Time to head up to the field. Our uh, gun's about done. According to the app, it says there's only 27 feet left. We'll see. Oh, now that was cool. I'm just getting up to the field here. We're backing down the lane, getting ready to make this pull. And I just got a text message that says my pump shut off. My pump shut off because the traveler's done. It sent the signal, it shut it down, it all worked. That is what it is for. Awesome, 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 awesome. So as soon as we get down here, we can close the valve and spin the thing around and then pull her out and start it back up. This should be a fast, uh, pull or uh, uh, change here, I guess. All right, we have problems. Uh, as soon as I said this should be a quick change, I should have known better. But uh, Phil brought that red truck up here this morning to get the 7520 when he took it to go use the disc, right? So that 7520, when we brought it up here a week and a half ago when we were laying pipe, it sat here overnight. The next day I went back to use it and it was dead. The, the red truck, yeah. Um, Dad put it in the shop, we charged the battery looked at it and stuff everything seemed to be okay it started up every time we got into it phil brought it up here this morning and now it's dead it won't start <sighs> which is the second problem that i've had the first problem is 
So I may have modified the stabilizer legs on this um, reel to use the impact on them because, well, crane cranks are slow. So I put this welded a nut onto a, it's not a shaft, it's a pipe. And that's my problem, it's a thin wall pipe, or well, too thin of a wall. I knew those were gonna cause me problems eventually. Uh, well, it just did. This one over here sheared off, or the gear came off of it. So, I can't crank the stabilizer leg up. Yeah, that's a problem. And so, I uh, was gonna take the red truck to get the tools to take this cap off so that I can put the hand crank back on. Well, that's, that's dead and I can't move it. So I do have a half inch wrench down there, but I called dad and said, hey, come help me. And so he's gonna bring me a wrench and I've got the hand cranks right here. So we should be able to just put this back in there unless my cotter pin is broken, which is entirely possible. Yeah, it is what it is. We'll get it and we'll figure this out. Well, we got it working temporarily. This is why I replaced them, because it's a lot, of, a lot of cranking compared to that. Keep going. Okay, okay. This corn is definitely growing, but it needs some water. So um, I switched out the nozzle. I put this little bit smaller one in again. Um, because we're getting farther away from the pump, so we're at a little bit lower pressure, and I need more distance to cover our middles, especially in the wind. This one is going to be mostly an overnight run, so it shouldn't be too windy, except for at the beginning here, but uh, it's affecting my spread pattern again. Uh, Dad's going to start to pump up for me, so we got to hurry up and get out of the way, because I don't want to be here when that thing fires up. Good news, I made it out of the way before he pressed start, or at least before the water got here. But it might start going pretty quick and I'd be able to see it. I'm not usually this close to the gun when it starts up. Look how, look how, cur how curled up our corn is. Oh, I can't water it fast enough. We got it running. I think we need a new battery. It's, uh, it's only seven years old, so it's about that time. All right, we will be back up here at 3.30 a.m. Woohoo! And it's gonna be a rough next couple of days because we got a bunch of short runs on the north end of this field here. So the uh, the next pull will be a fairly long one, almost a full pull, and then there'll be four short ones in a row that are like four to six hour pulls. So, yay. Right in, going into a weekend, holiday weekend. How fun for me. So we're gonna deal with that, um, but unless it rains, we're gonna keep pumping water. It's, much water as we can pump until it rains. There is a chance of rain tomorrow. It's diminishing. There is a chance of rain Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday next week. It's low, unlikely. But I'm saying there's a chance. Well, now it's 5.30 and I'm taking off because it is t-ball game night. They pick the hottest days to do t-ball, let me tell you. Truck says 99. I don't believe that. It's not 99. Maybe in here it is, but not outside. Uh, but it is definitely a hot one today, and I have to go sit outside for a t-ball game. Great. So, anyway, thanks for watching today. Have a great night. I'll see you in the morning. We'll probably we'll probably start this one off at 4, 3 30, 4 o'clock in the morning, just because I have to get up then. So do you. Like, subscribe. If I'm doing all this, you should at least like and subscribe. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. I mean, come on. Help me out. Go buy yourself some Borderview Farms merchandise while you're at it, please. Thanks, everybody. Have a great, have a great rest of your day.